Hey, Frank. This is pretty good. What are we eating? I cooked up some of that groundhog. Still pretty good. Hi, welcome to Mr. Dyer's Musings. Today, we're going to cook for our Father's Day special, Groundhog. As always, I'd like to thank my wife and family for their unconditional support. I'd like to thank my students for pushing me to be better. I'd like to thank you, my viewers and my subscribers, because without you, then this channel wouldn't exist. And if you haven't done so already, please check out my other videos after you finish this one and see if there's something of interest. And if you like them, consider subscribing to my channel and helping this educational journey grow as we learn together. Uh, i also like to thank my patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much for your contributions to help our channel grow and expand beyond what it normally will be. Today, since it's a Father's Day special, I have my two sons with me. Now, I started reenacting when I was 14 years old, and it's always had a special place in my heart, so I was pretty young. And my boys are now old enough that they're able to go out in the field with me. And this season, since of COVID and everything, we haven't really been able to go out in the field. But I thought, what a better way of bringing them out to this video, especially since we're going to learn how to cook uh, groundhog. Would you guys like to say hi? Hello. Hi. So it is summer here in Ohio. It's a hot day. Um, I'm in my backyard because, well, there's nothing going on. Um, so please excuse some of the historical inaccuracies. I'm going to try to explain how things would have been done out in the um, field. And the reason why we are cooking groundhog is because here in Ohio, country boys, we like to go hunting. And uh, squirrel, groundhog, rabbit, etc. Uh, they're good eating. And groundhog, for the most part, tastes just like rabbit. And when food was kind of scarce, when soldiers were out in the field and they were hungry because salt pork just wasn't very good or didn't feed them up or whatever, then they'd go out and forage. And they would often hunt for game. Now here in Ohio, big game in the 1860s, like deer, was actually becoming pretty scarce. But groundhogs and squirrels, etc., small game, was still pretty common. So if you're a farm boy from Ohio and you go down south in the Tennessee or Kentucky and you see groundhog, well, that's a hefty meal. As an officer, I'm responsible for providing for my own food. Now, maybe being an officer, I wouldn't have time to necessarily go out and do all the hunting myself. However, my servants would, and also as uh, various sources, like in John Wilder's book and in uh, Dr. Holt's book, uh, soldiers would often gift their surgeons with things like uh, extra forage. So getting a groundhog is very plausible for an officer to get to eat. Now, groundhog is a big meal. They have, I'm going to feed my family five tonight with this groundhog, so keep that into consideration. Uh, you think about an officer's mess, it would be a good opportunity to get a couple officers together and eat well for a night. Now, these boys, my oldest one is 10, and my middle child here is eight years old. And Dr. Wilder talks about having a 10-year-old boy as his servant. So this is a great experience for my eldest and my middle child to learn how to cook on the fire, learn how to cook safely, and how to possibly prepare me meal at our next event. So if you're a dad out there and you're thinking about getting into the hobby, uh, it's pretty cool taking your children and having them experience the journey with you. All right, so let's get started. So I've already skinned my groundhog. I'm not going to go into a video in detail about that. And I've also portioned it out into five main pieces. You've got your front legs, your hind legs, and you've got your middle section. Some people divvy it out even a little bit further and they cut the back uh, where the hips are off so they make six sections. I kept it all together, including a, a chunk of the belly area. Now that belly area, it's very thin meat, so you gotta watch it. It'll be easily burned. Um, so you gotta be careful on how you cook this meal. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a traditional 
fry. Because out in the field, some common things that you would have with you would be a flour ration. As an officer, I'd have to go to the commissary and purchase it, go to a sutler and purchase it. Um, salt, pepper, uh, getting lard is pretty common. So I do have my lard here. Um, onions are growing up here in Ohio this time. So I do have an onion that I'm going to fry it in. Uh, if you can find some fresh herbs from a garden, I'm going to be using rosemary, thyme, salt, and pepper. And it, rosemary and thyme, they go together really well for just about any meat. I'm going to mix that up in the flour. So when I take the meat pieces and I put it in the eggs, um, and then I'm going to dredge it in the flour and redo it again. And that's called country fried. So that's how we're going to cook it. All right. Okay, so we have our fire here. Now, as you can see, it's just my backyard campfire. So if you're out in the field, this is completely impractical. And you're most likely not going to have a grate. Even as an officer, um, oftentimes in the mess equipment, you're probably not going to have a grate. Uh, so what you would do is you could get a couple big logs and put those on the side, and you can make yourself a grate. Or you could even possibly grab a stone, put it over here on the side, and you can cook um, from an indirect heat and uh, cook your meal that way. So we have our fire start. It's breaking down into coals. Now, if you're ever in the scouts or some other outdoor organization, uh, you know that a fire, the flame itself, is not actually your best friend. What you want is a good bed of coals. That way it doesn't get too hot and you're not constantly re re regulating um, by moving the pan back and forth or lifting it. So all we want are just a bit, good bed of coals so we have a constant source of heat. Okay, so what we have here is rendered down lard. This is legitimate. It's not an oil, it's not bacon grease, this is actual lard. And we're going to put lard onto the skillet here. And we're going to get it good and hot. And that's going to be how we're going to uh, fry the meat. Go ahead and scoop it out. Grab the jar. Get a big old scoop. Big old scoop. Okay. And bring it over. Go on the fire. All right. how that does. And if you notice my skillet, this is not my uh, skillet that I take to reenactments because they didn't have the cold handle type skillets, um, but my riveted skillet is uh, it's too small for my family of five. So I got my bigger camping skillet going. Okay, so while that's heating up, I think we're going to need a little bit more. Uh, grab, grab the jar, grab a spoon, pull and stick it in there. There you go. All right. So that should do it. All right. So as you can see, the fire is heating up the skillet and the lard that was once white is melting away. While that's getting hot, we're going to go over to the preparation table and show you how we're going to make our mixture and uh, dredge the meat. All right, so our oil is heating up. Meanwhile, over here at the preparation table, we do have a large onion. I went ahead and I sliced them up into a couple slices. I also have my prepared sage, rosemary, and thyme. That's going to be thrown into the flour mixture. Uh, and also, a nice thing to have when you go campaigning is some type of container for some basic spices like salt and pepper. Now, uh, treen ware was extremely popular during the 1800s and glass has a tendency to break and glass is a little bit heavier. So if you are a reenactor and you're trying to think of some way to carry some spices in your personal kit without taking up too much weight and you're not afraid of breaking, then treenware or getting a wooden tube, drilling out and putting some corks is a great way of carrying those spices. So I went ahead and I already chopped up my rosemary as good as I could. Also chopped up the thyme leaves that I had and the sage. I just rubbed it off um, and it did a pretty good job. Next, I'm going to add my pepper 
into this mixture. And my salt. That way. So as you can see, I have my five spices. Now, I'm gonna take my prepared two cups of flour. And I'm gonna put it in my pan here. And I'm gonna have my son take the fork and he's gonna mix this all up really well. And while he's mixing up the mixture, I have four eggs here. Now, if you had access to milk, milk is a great way of making a dredge. However, I, mean, I have milk in the house, but I'm trying to be practical here. Um, there are some calves here um, in this area right now, so I could potentially go get milk, but milk would have been pretty difficult to, to get. Um, it's plausible, it's just would have been a little bit harder to get fresh milk. So we're only gonna use eggs for this dredge. So my son here is going to crack the eggs and put it in this dish. Now, of course, that dish is not practical for the field. So if you had a, uh, a mess with a bunch of other officers, then a mess pot like this would have been acceptable for your dredge. Keep cracking. And he's just going to take his fork and he's going to whisk it away. And we'll come back after this is done and we'll show you what the next steps are. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cook these onions in it. And as they start getting translucent, we will then put the groundhog on top of it. And the lard and the oil will impart on the outside of the crusted groundhog, some more onion flavor. Now today we have powdered onion. And they did have dried onion in the 1860s, but it would have been a little bit more difficult to get. So we're using fresh onion, and this is the way that we're gonna get our onion flavor added to our meat. Okay, so my sons have went ahead and they mixed up the flour mixture, and they mixed up the egg mixture, so now we're good to go to dredge the meat. Now one thing about groundhog, if you decide to go out hunt for the first time, just realize that groundhog is a very tough animal to skin. It's very, very difficult. It's not like squirrel, it's not like rabbit. It's a lot tougher, and there's a lot of fat on a groundhog, and there's scent glands that you need to remove. So that's not what this video is for, but just to keep you a heads up. And if you're a dad or a mom, and you like to go out and explore the woods, hunting is a great way to spend time with your kids. I'd like to take my sons out hunting with me. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our meat and we're going to dredge it in the flour first. Some people like to parboil the meat and before they actually fry it up. It just takes a little bit less time to fry. I did not parboil this. Um, but as you can see, just like a piece of chicken, you dredge it up and then you put it in your egg. You're going to coat it. Now a nice way to do it is if you have one hand for the dry, one hand for the wet, it makes things a lot bit easier, a little less messy. And once you have it coated, you're gonna stick it in the flour again, just so. Cover it up. And once you do that, it's ready for the fire. Okay, so our onions are starting to caramelize and starting to turn translucent, so now it's time to add the groundhog.
and we'll let that fry up and we'll come back. Once the groundhog is golden brown on one side, you go ahead and flip it over, add any of the onions that, that you might want it to at that time, um, and then you wait until the other side is nice and deep golden brown. Okay, so the groundhog is golden brown on both sides. As you can see, we served it up and we're uh, caramelizing some more onions to eat alongside of it. Alright, so the boys are ready to eat. They've been anxiously waiting. The groundhog is done. We're still caramelizing some onions. Uh, they're going to give their first opinion on what they think of groundhog. Go ahead, boys. Take a bite. All right, while we're waiting on Kaya to finish chewing. Theodore, what do you think? Uh, it's chewy. This is like chicken and hamburger. And it's hard to get your fork in. Okay. <laughs> Would you eat it again, Theodore? Uh, yeah. Kaya, what do you think? It's hard to get your fork in, too. You need to really tug. It's chewy, like Theodore said. I didn't really get much taste. I got like a slight bit of chicken and squirrel mixed together. Maybe a little, um, I lost my thought, but maybe it's like a little bit of hamburger. Did it taste good? Yeah. Like I said, I didn't really get that much taste. Would you eat it again? Yes. Would you eat it again, Theodore? Yeah. If you were really hungry, would you want to go out in the field and hunt one? Would you be willing to eat it? Yes. Uh, yeah. All right. It's going to be hard to skin it. Very good. All right. So there you have it. Some country fried groundhog, woodchuck, whistle pig, whatever you want to call it. The boys say it tastes really good. I'm really anxious to try it myself. So... Hope you give it a chance if you uh, are a hunter or if someone gets you a groundhog to go out in the field and do something that uh, a soldier might have done if they wanted a little bit more variety to their meal. So please like the video. If you liked it, please check out my other videos. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Help our channel grow. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Happy Father's Day to you fathers out there, father figures, etc. Um, what we do for our children uh, definitely uh, makes an impact on them. So if you can do some type of hobby, some type of interest that you're into, like I do with my sons, get them outside and uh, have a little bit of fun with them. So you guys have anything else to say to them? I actually got some flavor this time. Do you have anything to say to them? Yeah, it was good. Come I like on. this video. I like cooking groundhog. All right. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Give a kiss and hug to your loved ones and take care.